it's you almost don't want it too fast you don't want it too slow like it could indicate a stuck fermentation before you've even gotten off the ground but typically it's just like as long as you have the right oxygen content in the wort you have the right nutritional level and you've pitched enough yeast it's it should be it's nothing to be concerned about especially at the home brewing level it's like you guys got time you just learned all about fermentation now we're talking with our experts about fermentation lag time and what that means. Then we'll move on to active fermentation versus other forms. Lag time, I think, is something that gets blown out of proportion um, with in home brewing because we're looking at certain parameters on the professional level, but we're not checking the beer every like two hours. We're not saying, oh, it didn't start by now. Like, oh shit. Like it's, it's, you almost don't want it too fast. You don't want it too slow. Like it could indicate a stuck fermentation before you've even gotten off the ground. But typically it's just like, as long as you have the right oxygen content in the wort, you have the right nutritional level and you've pitched enough yeast, it's, it should be, it's nothing to be concerned about, especially at the home brewing level. It's like, you guys got time. Like if, if lag phase took, I don't know, two days here that's the beer now is going to take nine days we can't we can't wait around nine days we don't have enough tanks we need to get another beer in that tank um, but uh, so what is really happening during the lag phase is the yeast are going through their reproductive cycle which we also call uh, uh, aerobic fermentation You'll see a slight drop in work gravity, but it's usually not significant. Um, Croizen won't necessarily build, which is the foam. Croizen is the foam on top of the beer that's mostly yeast, really. Um, you won't see too much Croizen, and then right after lag phase, fermentation um, gets going. The Croizen will just bloom up, depending on what type of beer you're making, and then gravity will uh, exponentially drop. What's happening is the yeast are going through their reproductive cycle and using up all the oxygen that's present in the wort to um, build up their cell walls and uh, replicate, so just reproduce. And then they get down to the business of consuming the sugar that's in the, that's in the wort. Um, when the yeast is pitched into fresh, cooled wort, oxygenated, what, the, what they do is essentially, they assimilate the environment that they're in so, okay, we have a bunch of sugar, it's time to eat. They, um, they go through the, uh, the respiration stage, which is they, they, they consume that oxygen up. And that's essentially what, um, what's known as the lag time. And that's the point from when you put that yeast in to when you see that first little bubble come out of the, what, what's, uh, to us, the, uh, what looks like the active fermentation. So it's the time between when the yeast is put in and you hit your active fermentation. And that's the, that's the stage where they go from aerobic to anaerobic. And that's when you start seeing the, the blow off start really bubbling is in that uh, CO2 production state. Depending on uh, what style of brewer you are, you've got your active fermentation, which is like it's, it's going crazy, it's bubbling. Then you've got your secondary stage, which is still the fermentation. You, you don't, you don't see the bubbles coming out, but it's still, the yeast make a mess, then they clean it up. They reabsorb like diacetyl, which is that butterscotch flavor.